Hello everyone, my name is Eli McNeil. I'm a Canadian medievalist specializing in, um, in as much as I specialize in anything, um, the, uh, the history of the university in a medieval context, uh, as well as uh, its uh, interaction with society at large during the medieval era. And I'm here today to speak to you uh, about that very thing in the context of my paper, Silver Linings, Understanding the Histories of the Universities of Medieval Tuscany and their Surviving Documentation, um, which is available uh, in the copy of the Acts of the Sixth Cycle of the new uh, conference that was to be held in Florence in 2020. But unfortunately, we are uh, required to do this in a less intimate uh, medium as, as uh, results in the video you're now watching. Um, in any case, I'm very excited to be able to speak to you about the history of the university in the Middle Ages, especially when uh, these particular universities are concerned. This paper deals with uh, the history of the universities of Florence and Pisa specifically, as these were the, uh, the, the universities of the Republic of Florence during its Medici phase at the end of the Middle Ages, or what I'm classifying uh, as the, the late Middle Ages for the purposes of this study, being the end of the 15th century. Now, um, these two institutions were pre-existing schools that were elevated to university status, or the status, status excuse me, of the uh, Studium Generale. Uh, which was the contemporary medieval designation. Uh, and they were elevated by papal bull, uh, which conferred this status upon them. Uh, the bulls in question uh, for Pisa, uh, the bull was 1343's In Supremi Dignitatis, uh, and in the case of Florence, In Suprema Dignitatis Apostolice Specula promulgated in 1349, both by Clement VI, the Avignon Pope. Um, these uh, schools uh, continued on from their elevation uh, in uh, not the most successful of manners. There were a lot of uh, what I perhaps unkindly call in my paper lackluster fits uh, and unenthusiastic starts. Uh, or Perhaps I'm uh, uh, mixing my adjectives there, but some, some combination of those words, um, as you can read. Um, and uh, the, uh, this was due to a number of things. For those of you who are paying attention to the dates that I gave for the bulls themselves, you will have noticed that the Pisan bull was promulgated only five years before the introduction of the plague to Pisa. Um, and uh, in the case of Florence, it was elevated right in the center of that unfortunate epidemic, which we alone, um, in the, uh, the history of, of recent memory anyway, or, or well, living memory, um, are, are qualified to understand. You don't want to found a school in the middle of a pandemic. It's not very helpful. Uh, also, not terribly helpful for these two institutions was the fact that they were, and indeed their sites are uh, less than 150 kilometers as the crow flies from Bologna, the seat of one of the two pillars of the medieval university movement, being the University of Bologna, um, which uh, was one of the two most famous universities in the world at the time, uh, particularly when the faculty of law is concerned, uh, which was particularly important to study throughout Italy at that time. Um, so things were not looking good from the outset for these two studia, unfortunately. Um, but they continued nonetheless. They were associated with some, uh, some luminaries of their period. Uh, Boccaccio was one of them. Um, Petrarch was uh, somewhat uh, peripherally associated. Um, and, and others of their ilk, uh, people that, that are known even to non-medievalists. 
Um, but uh, this did not prevent them from closing down for periods of time and reopening. Um, and uh, for, you know, for, for them to kind of grind along. Uh, this uh, is particularly interesting to me, and hopefully to you, uh, as we get to the 1470s, over a century after their elevation to the status of Studium Generale. Uh, and uh, this uh, period is interesting because at that time, uh, when, for example, we have no evidence that the University of Pisa was actively operating. Um, it was in, uh, in 1472, in December of 1472, when the uh, Signoria of Florence um, the, uh, took, took, the, took action on a, an opinion that had existed for at least 15 years, that the, the uh, Florence was not the appropriate place for the university of their territory to exist. Uh, and for a number of reasons, the stated reasons, which as, as we all know may not have been the, the full picture, um, were that the, uh, the metropolis that Florence was and indeed is, um, was too distracting for students, and that the, uh, the rents were inappropriately high for housing both the school and the individual students themselves. Uh, and it was thought that by having the university exist in Pisa, which was experiencing some economic downturn at the time, that some economic uh, reinvigoration would occur for that city, as well as um, the decreased distraction and lower rents benefiting the school and the students. Um, the question that arises, and which created the reason for this paper, uh, is did the University of Florence move to Pisa, or was the University of Florence closed and the University of Pisa resurrected, essentially? Um, now, this may seem a foolish question. Um, of course, the University of Florence simply moved to Pisa. Why wouldn't they do anything different? Um, but on examination of some, some very important documents, um, and the few documents that remain from this period dealing with these institutions because um, the, the vast majority was destroyed or lost um, following considerable political turmoil uh, around this period and after this period. Um, these documents demonstrate that things were a little bit more complicated, uh, which is, is what we always hope for as academics, I, I, I think anyway. Um, in these, in, in these cases, uh, the, uh, the, the foundation bulls give us the initial indication that things may be more layered than, uh, than we initially think. Um, the foundation bulls, as with foundation bulls across the board where medieval universities are concerned, um, grant the power to confer degrees on the local archbishop or bishop, as the case may be. Um, by 1470, they are both archbishops, both in Florence and Pisa. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, while these bulls do specifically place these institutions in these cities and present it as, um, as a reward for the faith and, uh, and uh, obedience, I suppose is one way of phrasing it, of the citizens of these two important cities. Um, th these can be regarded as a, uh, a linguistic flourish. Uh, also, the, uh, the imperial bull granted to kind of refound or reestablish the foundation of the University of Florence in 1364 by Charles VI um, establishes the bishop as the head of the university with the right to confer degrees. Um, so uh, if the University of Florence had moved to Pisa following the decision of 1472, we would see the Archbishop of Florence granting degrees in Pisa, which is something that we don't see. In the three remaining, and only three remaining, 
uh, examples in the doctoral register housed in the Archiepiscopal Archive in Pisa. We note that following 1473, when the uh, university appears there, um, there uh, all doctorates are granted within the Pisan Archiepiscopal Palace. Again, that's only three instances, um, but it is significant nonetheless. Um, and uh, adding to that, after the movement of the university several times for several different reasons, for example, um, in uh, uh, the, uh, the 1470s, the uh, school was forced to relocate to Pistoia for a period of time uh, due to plague. Um, and I'll quote here from my paper, with the Archbishop relinquishing none of his powers, despite the new location being within a suffragan see of the Archdiocese of Florence. The position of the Pisan Church was rejected by the local Archbishop, who asserted his right to oversee the studium now located in his diocese, until its return to Pisa in 1480. Though no evidence of his success has been uncovered in the course of this study, uh, Rodolfo del Grada, who is one of the main supporters of the hypothesis that uh, the Pisan University was reborn instead of being simply a transferred University of Florence, indicates that Pisan archiepiscopal control was maintained during similar though considerably more brief translations of the school to Prato from March to November in 1482, and from uh, uh, for uh, a, a small period in February of 1486, perhaps because that city was the seat of a territorial prelature and not subject to a bishop other than that of Rome. The final and most complex migration uh, occurred in 1494 with the Pisan rebellion against Florentine dominance, uh, at which point Florentine subjects were expelled from the city of Pisa and the university relocated to Florence, uh, existing side by side, if not literally, um, then uh, certainly figuratively, uh, with the remnants of the University of Florence because some courses, particularly theology, continued to be taught in Florence even though the university existed in Pisa. Um, and uh, at this time, the degrees given by the University of Pisa in Florence were conferred by the Archbishop of Pisa and the, uh, the control of the university was undertaken from the Pisan Archdiocese, uh, although the Florentine Archbishop did attempt to take control, but he was thwarted uh, in, in that endeavor. Um, obviously, I go into a considerably greater detail in my paper, which I encourage you to read. Um, why does any of this matter, you may be asking. It's all very interesting, and I hope you agree on that point. But um, uh, the, the reason that this matters is to demonstrate that these papal bulls were not simply um, etheria, they were not simply foundation documents that no one paid any attention to even a century after their promulgation and a century plus after their promulgation. These were real documents that were implemented and honored, uh, perhaps not necessarily um, as, we, uh, as we regard our, uh, the foundation documents of our modern university institutions, at least that appears to be the case from my perspective in North America. Um, if you, uh, again, if you have any questions, um, I hope that uh, you will ask them through whatever means the Associazione Culturale um, provides. And uh, it, I've uh, had a, uh, a very good, if entirely too short time, telling you about my research. Um, and uh, I hope you stay safe and that those close to you stay safe during these um, unusual times. Thank you and uh, enjoy the other videos.